Well, now, time to take a look through the business pages of today's newspapers. There's a distinctly foodie theme to our guest this week. I'm joined by Richard Reid, the founder of Innocent Drinks and a supporter of the Britain Stronger in Europe campaign. On the other side is Lance Foreman from Foreman's Smoked Salmon. He's backing vote leave. So I see you disagree about the, the politics, but uh, united there in the, in the food industry. Very good morning to you all. Let's dive straight in. And uh, Richard, you've got this on the front of the business section of the uh, Sunday Times. Bank bosses told, hire more women or lose your bonuses. How's this going to work? Well, I think it's one of the issues of our era. I spoke at a business event on Wednesday night and there was 40 people in the audience and 39 of them were men. And I just thought, mm. What is happening? I'm not saying it's a criticism. You see it as an entrepreneur. It's just been, what a colossal missed opportunity. The fact is, and I'm absolutely a benefactor of this, but you have an inbuilt, invisible advantage if you're born male and white and get given an education. And I put that out as an observation, and it's a, a pretty obvious one, but I do think we do need to do things like this to sort of try and straighten up the odds for people. I think it is bad that you have less female representation. At, and it's not just banks, of course. The bank's yeah. always in the firing line, and maybe they should be put up first. But business generally, All it's still companies. the preserve of more men than women. Well, you know There's what's coming your way, Richard. But How are you in your own company? So we're 70% female. Now, is that deliberate? No, absolutely not. That is just, and in fact, it's after 15 years of running a business and every single time we interviewed someone, you just choose the candidate that you're most excited by, that think you're going to do the best job. And I looked up 15 years later and went, our company is 70% female. So I know firsthand how brilliant it is to have, you know, a properly diverse workforce. Well, so, better for you, and I just wonder, I just say to the banks, you're missing out. It's right. a great opportunity. So, Lance, what do you think about and, and what's going on in Foreman's in uh, terms of uh, gender equality? Well, I, I, the first thing I think I should say is the reason why there weren't 40 women in that audience, they probably weren't, weren't aware that you were speaking, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll but, take um, but, you know, I, I, I believe in meritocracy. Um, and I just, you know, I don't believe in quotas. And I just sort of put myself into that position. You know, if I were invited onto a board because of a quota system, I think it would actually undermine my own confidence. You know, I, I do believe in a meritocracy. In my own business, I would say that about 60% of the, um, the employees are female. And we, we just employ the best people for the job, whatever that happens to be. And I'm sure uh, a lot of companies agree with that. I, I just want to bring this in, Richard, because I see the, the headline below the uh, on the page we were discussing there. And uh, given what your company does, amongst other things, soft drink giants prepare to sue over sugar tax. Of course, it doesn't apply to your products. Do you feel you dodged a bullet? Because there's quite a lot of sugar in some of your products. Oh, no, I think this is, this is absolutely... Uh, right in terms of, of course you don't tax juice and smoothies, they're fruit. Now there's sugar in everything that you eat. It's about, have, this is the difference between something adding sugar into a drink and having something that doesn't. So no, it's not dodging a bullet, this is just common sense prevailing. Of course a juice is good for you and that's why the tax is not being placed on it. OK, Lance, uh, your story, you've got uh, this about budget house building, of course, another Great issue of our times. Budget uh, missed out on steps to encourage uh, house building. This uh, from Liam Howley. Well, that's right. I mean, there's been so much talk in the budget about um, all the things that did happen and uh, obviously all the stuff around the disability benefits, um, capital gains, reductions and so on. But the one obvious thing that wasn't there, and certainly if I was Chancellor, I'd be pushing for more than anything, is to encourage house building. I see that as the biggest problem within the UK itself at the moment. You know, we have a huge shortage and George Osborne's sort of tinkered around with, um, you know, these sort of um, uh, various schemes to encourage people to buy and to help, you know, help to buy. But we need to build. I mean, and the very building of homes will create thousands of jobs, maybe tens of thousands of jobs. You know, we, because of the you know, increased migration we have here, we have a housing shortage. and. It's only by building more that you solve the affordability problem. It's a very simple case of supply and demand. We need to build, I would guess, about two to three million new homes. Wow. And that's got to be such a good thing to do because, yeah. you know, you'll create jobs. And, you know, and, and when we had, um, you know, a year ago, this new national living wage, 
putting people's wages up because they can't afford to live. The other way of dealing with the affordability crisis is making the costs the of cost. living cut yeah. the costs. It's too and ways. if we yeah. bring, you know, build more houses, it'll bring the cost of living down and then we can be more competitive well, as a nation. Well, and bring house prices down. Absolutely, you know, we need to bring house prices down. Absolutely. With all the electric. Uh, Uber, uh, Richard, and uh, another uh, large multi multinational and its tax arrangements. I just think if there's one thing that everyone in this country, whether they're of the left or the right or the middle, can agree on and get angry at, it's this. It's the idea of incredibly powerful, incredibly well financial financially resourced international companies deliberately putting in tax structures to avoid paying tax in the countries where they do business. It is nonsense, it is, it is irresponsible and what I always catches in my throat is when the companies go on record and say oh they're just following the letter of the law. It's total nonsense. I'm calling it out at innocent. We were recommended it at one point, by our... I was going to say, do you have some clever people coming along Absolutely. saying that's saving this money? You have money. clever people who are selling you the, 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 this structure because, of course, they make fees on putting in the structure. And we're like, well, it sounds great. It's like, oh, we're going to be able to not pay tax. And you look at it and you go, but it, hang on, it's basically a dodge, isn't it? And people go, yes, it's basically a dodge, but we can make sure you get away with it. No, so we but said, no on. way. And I mean, bring Lance in on this. Allowed. I wonder, wonder, wonder if you've had uh, similar wheezes uh, put your way. But um, then there's this, they also argue, these companies, well, it's our responsibility to our shareholders to maximise profits and make sure their return is as high as can possibly be. I'm but, sorry to put in, but this is my, it's my soapbox, so indulge me. <laughs> I have absolute respect for these entrepreneurs that set up these incredible companies. They make billions of pounds for themselves by introducing these incredible new technologies and services and things that consumers love. That's the way to get rich. That's the way to give profit back to your shareholders. Deliberately misleading and putting in stack structures to avoid money going to the countries where you're doing business. That's not the way to do it. That's, you've already made billions and billions. From doing the good wow. stuff, the positive stuff. There, Don't make it from the dodgy there. stuff. Yeah, there <laughs> Loving is. It. Loving it's passion. nonsense. Are you passionate? Lance? Well, I, I am, but you know, we are in a world now. We're in an international world where so much new business is created through technology, and it's going to be very hard to actually nail companies down to to various tax regimes. And the whole thing needs to be thought through again. And you know, maybe if as Osborne has done actually, if he reduces corporation tax and continues to reduce corporation tax, it'll be at a level where everyone's we'll in the same boat and we'll all be happy but to pay it. The thought just occurs, given the uh, sides of the referendum campaign, you're on, aren't you on the wrong sides in terms of, of that? Uh, I mean, you know, maybe this is simplistic, but Richard, you know, if we stay within the EU, isn't it the case that uh, you know, companies are going to find it easier to move their profits around, certainly within the European Union, if we had... No, exactly the opposite. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly the opposite. Together, right. we're stronger. Otherwise, these massive international companies play off one country yeah, against you know, the other. They, they, they set up in Amsterdam, they set up in Luxembourg, and it's so easy to do yeah. so. Lichtenstein. Absolutely, yeah. and that's why we have to tackle it together. They can't, if they play one off against the other, they win. This is, it's the same as, it's, it's like Putin. He wins if we fracture. If ever the world needed a show of solidarity, togetherness, actually solving these massive big problems together, it's now. All the right. idea that we're going to solve it by like but being able to yeah, be played well, off against come on, Lance. Lance. Big, you know, big business loves Europe because they can Small do exactly. Small business loves well, Europe. They can do exactly what you've suggested. They can shuffle their profits around to put it through to the lowest tax regime. Small business can't do that. They're not international, so they don't have the ability to do that. And the other thing about big business is that, you know, it's big business that can afford to actually lobby all the Brussels bureaucrats to create all the regulations that actually make it very difficult for small businesses to. To, to trade. I mean, we, we had the most ridiculous um, thing happen to us um, last year. So there was some new regulation on packaging. And we produce smoked salmon, as you said. Mm. Last year, we had to spend thousands of pounds printing a warning sign on the back of our pack saying, contains fish. I mean, that's just absolutely mad. Maybe the EU should have a big warning sign, contains nuts on the top of it. I don't know, but it's, uh, but it's is, crazy. This it's is crazy. the same organisation that you are getting uh, the, the status of to protect the geographical relevance of your fish. So at London Cured Fish, you're getting EU protected status. So come on, you shouldn't be biting the hand that feeds you quite as much as you are. Well, well, listen, um, I'm told, yeah, we are out of time, but you can come back. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so much with some of your products as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very good to see you both. Thank you both. Very Thank much you. indeed. Now, uh, still to come on Manhattan.